This man is the unluckiest pirate in the world who travels in an old ship with incompetent crew. Despite these circumstances, he challenges himself to win the award of Best Pirate of the Year. It's 1837. England is ruled by Queen Victoria, who is quite welcoming towards her guests unless they are not pirates. One fine sunny day, the military commander arrives at the palace to share some good news. They have defeated all of their enemies, including the French and the Russians. Their navy is also ruling the sea but having a little problem with the pirates. The queen gets angry just hearing the word pirates. Even on her royal crest it's written that she hates pirates. She orders her army to catch all the pirates and feed them to sharks. They are nothing more than filthy and deadly thieves. However, not all the pirates are deadly. Just like this group of funky pirates sailing in the middle of the sea. Tonight, they are fighting over another useless point. The best part of being a pirate is looting or the shiny cutlass. Suddenly, their captain enters the scene and says that the best part is neither looting, cutlass, or meeting the pretty mermaids. The actual best part is ham night, a perfect time to enjoy food and celebrate their achievements. All the pirates start cheering for the captain, but he asks them to stop because it is not all about him. The credit also goes to the crew. Some of them are ugly, some are lazy, and seem to be just fish dressed up as pirates. But despite that, it's the best crew the captain can ask for. He also loves the newest member of the crew, Polly, the overweight parrot. The captain actually gathered the crew to make an important announcement. The King of Pirates has announced the registration for the Pirate of the Year award. The captain has been losing this competition for the last 20 years, but he still wants to keep trying. The next morning, the ship sails to Blood Island, where the registration is taking place. The captain pushes all the participants aside to get the registration form and fills it up with excitement. All the crew members start cheering for him and believe that he will surely win this time. Suddenly, another promising participant arrives. It's Pegleg Hastings. He also brought a huge bag of gold to show off. His spotlight gets stolen by the only female pirate, Black Bellamy, who brings the world's biggest diamond with her. The captain realizes that he is just dust in front of such powerful pirates, so he decides to leave without submitting the entry. Before he can leave, the ground starts shaking, and a huge whale lands right on the registration booth. As it opens its mouth, a pirate named Cutlass Liz walks out with loads of gold under his feet. He greets the other participants and also asks the captain how he's been. The captain answers casually and tries to leave as soon as possible, but before he can, Polly spits out the entry form it swallowed earlier. After finding out that the captain wants to participate, the other pirates start making fun of him. The award is given to the one with the most treasure, and the captain hardly has a handful of gold. His crew tries to calm him down, but the captain can't bear the humiliation, and announces that he will be the next pirate of the year, and will laugh back at everyone. He submits the form, and goes back to his ship. The captain encourages his crew, and explains that they still have enough time to gather more treasure. His loyal assistant, number two, points at an arriving ship, and the captain immediately orders the crew to get ready to attack. After throwing a few cannons, the captain jumps on the other ship and introduces himself. But it turns out to be a plague boat, and its riders haven't eaten a grain for months. The captain doesn't give up and keeps attacking every ship in sight. The second one turns out to be a bunch of students on a geography field trip while the third one has naturists. The next one turns out to be the worst. It's a ghost ship. The captain gets disappointed and locks himself. After a few days, number two notices another ship and rushes to the captain, but he refuses to try again. He is even thinking of retirement. Number two gets really worried as he knows that the crew will be lost without the captain. And all this just because of a stupid award. They already have enough achievements. They might be small, but they had a lot of fun doing them together. For his crew, the captain will always be the best pirate. Hearing this, the captain gets cheered up and continues his search for treasure. Unfortunately, the next ship is also not a treasure ship. It belongs to an explorer named Charles Darwin. He has been traveling for more than three months looking for new species and undiscovered lands. He writes all of his experience in his diary so his research doesn't go to waste. The captain breaks into his ship and asks for the treasure but all he finds is body parts of different animals. Charles explains that he's just on a scientific expedition which makes the captain really angry. Only once. Just for once he wanted to do something to be proud of in front of his peers. But even this small wish can't be granted. The captain gets so angry that he orders Charles' execution. Before getting thrown in the water, Charles asks for a moment to write this incident in his diary. 
he suddenly notices Polly and says that it's not a parrot at all. It's the dodo bird that has been extinct for more than 150 years. Charles wants to buy it, but the captain immediately refuses because he considers Polly as a member of their family. Charles explains how big a discovery this bird is, and if it's presented in London, a huge reward can be obtained. Before Charles can give more details, the crew member throws him in the water. The captain orders to pull out the explorer because he wants to know more about the reward. Number two reminds everyone how much Queen Victoria hates pirates, but the captain is ready to take any risk to get the reward. Charles encourages him and tells the pirates to hurry as the science exhibition is just in a week. After a few days of continuous travel, the pirates finally reach England. They see several boards with Queen's pictures inviting the guests, but there are also deadly warnings for the pirates. She has even set up an execution dock where she hangs the caged pirates and starves them to death. After stopping at the port, Charles asks for Polly so he can show it at the exhibition and brings it back the next day. However, the captain is not willing to entrust his precious pet to anyone. He's going to present it himself. Charles starts talking about the dangers a pirate faces in the streets of London, but the captain has a solution. Beside being pirates, they are also masters of disguise and immediately dress up as scouts. Charles seems a little annoyed because he wants to present Polly himself. He invites the pirates to stay at his home for the night so he can try another way to get Polly. The captain doesn't suspect him at all, but number two is having some bad vibes. After a while, they arrive at a creepy mansion which Charles calls home. As the door opens, they get greeted by a monkey who speaks using flashcards. He's Mr. Bobo, one of the science projects of Darwin in which he is trying to prove that monkeys can become civilized like humans. Charles shows the pirates their rooms, so everyone can rest before the big day tomorrow. In the middle of the night, Number Two is wandering around to see if the mansion is safe or not. He suddenly notices Charles talking suspiciously to his monkey. They seem to be plotting something evil. Number Two immediately tells this to the captain, but he believes that Charles is just an innocent fellow who will help them in getting the treasure. Number Two is still in doubt and sits down holding a sword. After a while, he falls asleep too. The captain dreams about winning the Pirate of the Year award. He almost gets it, but another pirate tries to snatch it. When the captain gets up, he finds a thief trying to snatch Polly. He wakes up number two, but the thief already escapes through the chimney. Both the captain and number two follow the thief, but he uses the window to get back in the mansion. Meanwhile, the captain and number two break into the bathroom and slide down in the bathtub along with the other crew members. They break the whole mansion but fail to catch the thief. Charles is waiting at the door because the thief is actually Mr. Bobo. They have planned to run away with Polly, but the bathtub full of pirates fell over them. Luckily, the bird is saved, but the thief escapes. Bertou accuses Charles, but he is quite sneaky and puts all the blame on other scientists in town who are also eyeing on the bird. The captain falls for the explanation and advises everyone to get back to sleep. The next morning they all travel to the exhibition but Charles stops the pirates from entering as only the scientists can do that. He uses this excuse so he can present the bird himself, but he forgot that the pirates are masters of disguise. They dress up as scientists and easily get into the exhibition. Charles keeps asking about Polly, but the captain only says that it is in a safe place. As the exhibition starts, each scientist presents their discovery one by one. When the captain's turn arrives, he goes to an empty room and returns with Polly. Charles can't believe his eyes and accepts his defeat. The captain walks to the stage with a cage covered in red cloth. Firstly, he builds suspense in the audience by exaggerating the history of dodo birds, and then he lifts the cloth to present Polly. The audience starts cheering in wonder and some of them even faint in shock. Eventually, the Royal Society's prize for best scientific discovery is given to the captain. Surprisingly, it's just a tiny award and a set of leather-bound encyclopedias. The captain excuses himself to ask Charles about the reward. Charles says that the biggest prize is still to be revealed. The next moment, Queen Victoria enters the ceremony. She congratulates the captain and shows her concern for Polly getting kidnapped. Therefore, she offers to keep the bird in the royal zoo in her palace. The queen keeps explaining how magnificent her zoo is, but the captain refuses to give Polly and says that there's nothing more important for a pirate than his trusted bird. Hearing the word pirate, the queen immediately gets triggered. To prove that he is a scientist, the captain pulls out some chemicals, but they burn his clothes and reveal his true self. 
the queen orders the guards to cut off his head, but Charles reminds her that if the captain dies, they will never know where he has hidden the bird. The queen understands and stops the guards. She announces that the captain is being pardoned of his crimes and will stay in London to share his stories. But secretly, she orders Charles to get Polly. As soon as the captain gets free, he gathers his crew and prepares to immediately leave this deadly city. Charles runs after the pirates to stop them and shows the newspaper with the captain's picture. He wants the captain to celebrate this moment by having a few drinks with some gorgeous ladies. Number two tries stopping the captain, but it's too late. It's the first time. The captain is getting much respect, so he doesn't want to miss a moment. Charles takes him to a fine bar and offers him as many drinks as he can ever imagine. Soon, the captain gets completely drunk and can't even walk straight. Charles uses this chance to ask him about Polly. The captain falls for the trick and pulls out Polly from his beard. That's where he hides his most precious belongings. Mr. Bobo immediately pulls out a gun to distract the captain and runs away with the bird. The captain runs after them and they all end up in a strange tower that is built with an elevator. While they reach their destination, Charles decides to explain his intentions. He might be a great discoverer, but he failed to find a girlfriend for himself. There's a girl he really loves, and she is fond of exotic animals. Therefore, he thought that if he gives her the dodo bird, she may get impressed and agrees to date him. The captain feels sorry for him and asks why he didn't say this earlier. The pirates would have definitely helped him in getting his love. The elevator finally stops, and they meet Charles's crush, who is no other than Queen Victoria. She still doesn't accept Charles's love and sends him away. Afterward, she starts trying to convince the captain to give away the bird. She promises to give Polly a royal treatment at her zoo, and she also has something for the captain. Saying this, she takes him to show her treasure. It's more than the captain has seen in his whole life. The captain starts thinking over this. He can't sell his beloved Polly, but on the other hand, it's his only chance to win the Pirate of the Year award. Meanwhile, his crew has made all the preparations for the ham night and waits anxiously for the captain. He suddenly arrives and also brings a lot of treasure. He tells his crew that he has stolen all this during a daring raid on the Tower of London. Now they must hurry to leave before the royal guards reach here. The next day, the pirates head towards the Blood Island to take part in the annual pirate ceremony. Number two feels that something is definitely not right, so he asks the captain about the bird. The captain says that it is not safe to keep a rare bird like Polly outside, so it's better for it to stay hidden. He even gives a sneak peek of Polly in his beard so number two gets satisfied. Once the ceremony starts, all pirates eagerly wait for the results. It will be announced by the chief guest, the King of the Pirates. Firstly, he announces the final nominees of the competition. Each one of them brought huge treasures, but the judges have personally counted the wealth of each pirate and declared that this time the Pirate of the Year award goes to the captain. He proudly stands up and walks up to the stage. The award is just inches away from him when a pirate interrupts them. He has read the newspaper and saw that the captain was pardoned by the queen. If that happened for real, then it means that the captain is no longer a pirate and doesn't deserve the award. The captain tries to explain, but no one listens to him. Everyone calls him an insult to the pirate community and asks him to leave. The pirate king takes away captain's hat, coat and badges, and also his treasure. After leaving the ceremony, the captain's crew tries cheering him up by saying that they don't need any award or a hat to be a pirate. They still have their ship and their beloved bird, Polly. Hearing this, the captain decides to finally reveal the truth. He has sold Polly to Queen Victoria for the sake of treasure. He tries justifying his actions by saying that Polly will have a better life at the palace, but the crew is totally disappointed. They don't say a word and leave. Even number two is not willing to stay with the captain who sold a family member for the sake of a stupid award. After losing his crew, the captain becomes really depressed. He has never thought of anything else besides being a pirate. He eventually returns to London to find a job. After a few days, he starts knitting and selling baby clothes. However, his heart aches and he wants to fix everything. The captain decides to break into the palace and get back Polly, but it is present in his cage. Charles is sitting nearby with a sad face, and he tells the captain that Polly is gone forever. He was a fool to love the queen. She never wanted Polly for her zoo. Charles has discovered that Queen Victoria is a member of a terrible secret dining society. Kings, queens, and emperors from all over the world meet at Victoria's flagship, the QV-1. 
they gather to eat the rarest and most endangered creatures they can find. This year, the highlight is the dodo bird, Polly. Hearing this, the captain asks Charles to get ready to rescue the bird and fix all the mess they created. They ride a hot air balloon and rush after the queen's ship. While trying to hide from the guards, Charles falls to the poultry room. He gets covered in feathers and the guards assume that he is a chicken. The captain pretends to be a staff member and takes Charles to the kitchen. The chef is about to cook the poor dodo bird, but the captain reaches there in time to save it. The queen at the dining hall feels suspicious and rushes to check in the kitchen. She takes off her gown and pulls out her swords to fight. The captain doesn't give up and fights back. As soon as the queen gets her hands on Polly, she raises her sword to kill it. But Mr. Bobo arrives at the right moment. He has also brought the whole crew. The captain starts apologizing, but it is not the right time. They must leave the ship because it is going to explode because of the mixing of baking soda and vinegar barrels. The queen uses this chance to jump on the air balloon along with Polly, but the captain hangs on the rope. Polly bites the queen and jumps back to its owner. They are saved by the crew, while the queen flies away to a random island where she meets a lot of exotic animals, but this time, she is the food. Meanwhile, the captain returns to the ship and continues to explore the sea along with his loving crew.